Here we go. Okay. Hi, welcome to your daily dose of dopamine with Susan and Robert. Robert, hey, look at I got the heart up right now because I wanted to bring something from uh, we had a great day. It's always a great day when we do a couple of classes, and um, I thought both of them today were phenomenal. And uh, for those who missed it, we hope to see you next time. Um, the Jam for Joy is every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, and uh, the curriculum classes will continue to sign up. And uh, they're different deals, larger than that, or related, I should say. Um, we've made a point of uh, invoking uh, Brene Brown's name more and more because she's becoming a bigger part of my research. And the, the further I look, the more I go, we're just aligned. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I wanted to spend a little time here with you about what we can do to seriously invite Brene uh, to connect, to be part of the, the Yes and X uh, Exercise Festival in Texas, to just be aware of this work with an understanding that, you know, frankly, I mean, as I look at it, I go, I can absolutely make curriculum out of her work. And I don't need her permission, of course, whatever. It, it is something I'd like to do, something I, well, I should say I'm already doing it. <laughs> and, you know, there we're tapping into, of course, not just her, but all the people who love and admire her work as well, which I'm in the crowd of. I, I'm yes anding, and I think doing her bidding in that regard. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think yes. that's what she wants, is it's for it to get out there. Yes. So, yes. I, I, I love that. I love that idea. So here we are, two people, so aligned with her thinking and res everything she says is like, right. it, it is, it, it's like you guys were cut from the same cloth. It's like all of us were cut from the same cloth and we just haven't actually physically met. That doesn't make sense. It's like in the universe, there's this connection. <laughs> It's just one of us doesn't know that yet. So uh, that's why we have uh, YouTube and Facebook and other forms of social media that can be a, a facilitator of that introduction. So why don't we talk about why she would be interested? What is it about yaks? What is it about the day one journey? There's a lot there. I know she speaks to the power of story owning your story, understanding it, and then, you know, revising it to suit your highest good. Um, her work with emotions is intrinsically important in our version of, and I'm glad to see classmates start to pop up like this who say, you know, I've done improv other places. I feel, I feel, you know, like I know it. This is different. And I go, they do. great. They I do. love that. Yes. To have experienced improvisers coming and going, yes, you're using improv and you're using it differently. Um, again, I want to be very clear, not better. I haven't reinvented the wheel. I don't mean anything like that. I just mean we're applying it in a way that- It is aligned with the Brene's approach kind of to the yeah. world. And, and again, she's, such, she's so seated in the heart of emotions. And you know, for my many decades of work in improv, emotions are talked about, Yet they're couched in something you're responsible for as an actor, which I get, and that's part of the work, and that's fine. At the same time, the big miss is, and it, you know, again, little bits here and there. Second City was the closest I got to it of the, of the big schools I worked with. The focus on the connection, that's what improv does. And that's what you hear me say that word. That's what she's talking about. That's, that's what we do this work for is to connect better because we are the big problem we're a disconnected world broadly we're disconnected people both individually isolated and inner lacking integration between each other so in order to get to that place it's not just knowing the information it's playing with it in a way that feels safe that can feel discovery based transformation based and then you can use that for yourself and with others and we continue to figure out and, and let other people figure out for us how to do exactly that. So that's where I think the connections lie. And when we do that, we are doing what she entitled either her first or second book, we are daring greatly. It's a big deal for those of us who've never done improv and many of us, probably most of us have come to the Yaks Method in the day one program 
through the Parkinson's world. That's how we found you. And the work itself, I'll just, I'll just speak for me, kept me here because it was working. And what was I doing? I was daring greatly to do something, to, to be the guy in the arena, not just standing on the outside, but to, to realize that, as, as you said to me, this is here. This is a, a vital, real thing. But until you jump in, you will never understand it the way you will once you jump in. And that's, that's what her, her work is too. So there's a, there, there's so many levels. I, I agree with you about emotions. Um, what, I'm trying to think what else you've well, role play, I mean, literally in Atlas of the Heart in the, the latest show on HBO Max, which I highly recommend, please everyone read the book and watch the show. In the show, she puts some of her great research from the book into action, interacting with the audience and having some fellow members of her team come up and role play with her, which they're improvising, right? They know generally what they're doing. And mm -hmm. so there it is again. We, we take yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> and, she, and she uses film clips. And and stories like like you do right. to support it's 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 not to convince us or anything it's supplemental to the experience you're offering us in the games that we play. Brene's taking you through a thinking process, a feeling process, with the goal of raising your awareness of of yourself and as a member of a of a larger community. The responsibilities we all have and. She so talks she, about about witnessing. What, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You go ahead. She talks about witnessing emotions, and that's the power of the film clips, right? Mm -hmm. Because we get to see talented creatives putting forth honest emotion in ways that we can recognize, and therefore, you know, it's one thing to look at those for entertainment, which is fine, wonderful. To look deeper and say it's entertainment, yes, and there's a truth that can be something more, right? She's yes anding the, the art, which the artists love. And really the people who love the product, they should love too, because they go, oh, I just loved it because it was entertaining. And now I get to actually maybe draw something from it. Um, yeah, that's right. another and, line. Yeah, and, and you do that intentionally. That's right. how you set your class up. With your PowerPoint presentations, you've linked a film clip or a story or something you've learned and you create games to give your students the, the chance to experience that in whatever way it takes them. You know, you may not know quite what's going on with an individual. It could be self-esteem. It could be self-confidence, it could be shyness, it could be a bad experience in the past. And the environment that you create is, as you said a second ago, it's safe. It's also very um, um, you we feel, I feel like <laughs> kind of like the only person in the room. I feel that well attended to. And every one of us on the little Zoom screen feels that way, that you hear us. If we feel like we goofed up, you find a way to help us see it from another side, all of which is positive. I think she would love your work. Brene, are you listening? Brene, <laughs> has anybody sent this to you yet? <laughs> yeah, or friends of Brene or people who just wish to write to Brene or whatever it is. We can we can do a, a campaign. We can take my favorite Andy Dufresne and start writing her snail mail letters, you know, until she, you know, recognizes us. One last thing for now anyway, because we're over time. Um, you mentioned connections. She calls herself a creative and she takes great pride in that right um that's a specific type of person I, I don't know i don't know actually i've been trying to find what she how she manifests that if she means a creative as a researcher if she has some other artwork she does that you know is part of her that's something we do and it, it touched me very much today that it came up a couple times 
you know, with a couple of participants saying, I don't think of myself as very creative and I'm trying to trust the unknown that what you're saying is true. The, the participant who said, you know, um, you handed me that card that says I'm creative. She remembered that. And she gets to hold in her heart. Oh yeah, because I gave her this mind putty card that says you are creative. Uh, it's your birthright, love Robert, you know, type of thing. And she held that and she's coming back and trying to play herself into that manifestation. The, the gift of creativity, being thinking of yourself as a creative, doesn't need to be the typical, you know, painter, writer, et cetera. It's Absolutely. a mindset, right? Mm -hmm. You can be a creative lawyer. You can be a creative doctor. You can be a creative accountant. Be careful with that one. Um, <laughs> you know, you can use creativity in your, your personal life, um, relationship-wise. It's an incredibly powerful thing, and, and yet something that people isolate themselves from. She calls herself a creative. I am convinced that creativity is one of the outcomes of what we do. So I lay that at your feet to say that's another line. I have a whole lifetime of not identifying with any of the classic forms of what one would call, you know, she's creative, she paints, she sings, she whatever, performs in some way. And to me, it's fascinating to have that word used as a noun, like I am a creative. That is really interesting. My, my experience in the work that we've done here, the work we are doing here, is proving to me <laughs> over and over again, the definition of the word creative is vast. It's, it's almost endless. So what you're doing, you know, was an idea that other than that second city experiment, nobody had talked about and it's just proving itself as a, as a grounded theory they yeah. came out of your own imagination and your own observations and willingness to connect things. Right. Yeah. It's well, starting with that. Yeah. And someone called yeah. that out just the other day. I was just, who was looking at the work and just saying, this really does all circle back to your dad, doesn't it? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I pay it forward with the story of yeah. my dad talking about his father, my grandpa, and my, me now talking about him and us. That's why we're the model we are. That's why. That's why and how it all aligns. So, and I, I think, and the pay it forward concept is again, it's it's unusual. I mean, I think most people know what it means. Right. Most people would not associate that as a business model. Right. And There's that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I think Brene Brown would go, "Dang, dude, that is a really cool idea. That is a." really creative way to think about a business and building it from a, a firm place for yourself and the way you communicate it to the world. Yeah. I'll say this too. I keep saying one more thing and we'll probably keep going if I don't cut it off, but she does have, as you know, uh, for if you've, you've seen some of her stuff, she, she touches on a number of Buddhist concepts. So clearly she has some exposure to Buddhism. You know what Buddhism means to me, as we talked about, very much centered my life at about 30 years old what I call kind of a before and after period for myself transitionally. And she uses these, she has taken these concepts, these thousands, thousands of years old concepts, you know, and put them into modern research, active modern research. And I feel the same way about, you know, when we have players, John comes to mind, others who have some exposure to Buddhism, they go, you're doing that, aren't you? You know, and I go, yeah. I, I try not to put it too far forward because sometimes I know I can alienate people. And yes, I know I can't avoid it because it's just part of who I am. Well, it's 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 a label, you know. Right. It, it, those values and thoughts and approaches and the philosophy is it's not one box. No, and, and and the Dalai Lama and everything I've read in Buddhism would say exactly that. It's not about becoming a Buddhist and wearing it on your sleeve to divide and say anything else. It's an idea. And I love the Dalai Lama goes out of his way. Don't leave your religion. Keep your religion. And if you like some of Buddhism, take what you like of it too. Yeah, hey, he's saying yes and. <laughs> That's a lovely way to end. That's a lovely way to end. The Dalai Lama says Buddhism is yes and. Meditate on that. We'll see you next time. Go Warriors. <laughs> Go Warriors. <laughs>